Beautiful. So here we have VG Neurotic. He's going to be uh, playing for us here today. He sent me this little clip, 12 minutes long, beautiful length. Of course, if any of you uh, that are watching this now would like to submit a clip, just DM me on any social media that I have down below in the description. Y'all can go ahead and send in those clips. But we see we're rocking the, the Pyromancer. We have a decent little build right here. I want to break this down real quick. So this goes into what I call the four fundamentals of spell break. It's something that I just created just now, right before the video started. So I'm going to number them out for you right here. This is a perfect opportunity. So we have, look at my beautiful mouse handwriting. We have movement. We have positioning. Holy English. We have our class and talents. And we have our build synergy. I could go on all day about all four of these topics. All, all these topics, especially this one. This one is probably one of the more important ones. Movement is a mechanical skill that you're going to pick up as you play the game. Positioning, semi-mechanical, more game sense. You're going to find out that high ground is your best friend. Uh, class and talents, this is purely before the game. You want a theory craft. You'll learn, you'll pick this up by experience. Um, but pretty much this is all selected before the game starts. And then you have build synergy. This is what you actually want to end up with um, once you're in the actual game. Whatever you decide to loot, whatever you end up with, whatever your goal is, whatever your, your ideal build is for that game, that's where number four comes in. And it's really important whenever you talk about things like, do I want to be a long-range sniper with a close-range option? Do I want to dragon fire people to death all game? Do I want to... Do I want to just have my frost gauntlet and my lightning and just keep at a distance? All of those things are going to play into, especially point number three and four. So going in to his talents right here, first off, we have the Pyromancer on his class. It's a very, very good build, this patch in 2.2. Uh, it gives you a decent amount of movement, lots of, excuse me, lots of extra damage. So if you hit any direct fireballs, if you hit, if you hit anybody with a fire puddle, the flame wall, it's all going to get ignited on your opponent. It's very good for chasing people down as damage ticks will actually reveal your opponent's positioning. It's very important for a chase down mechanism. You have Firefly, which allows you to both engage and disengage from fights and also just mix up your movement in the middle of a fight. It's very versatile. Uh, Conflagration is not a good skill, but it is useful in very niche scenarios. And in terms of his talents here, of course, the staple, Runic Fluency. It's a two cost talent, this patch. Beautiful for extra movement. Uh, my favorite thing to run on Pyromancer is dash. Um, you can also make good use of flight, shadow step. There's a, You can even do teleport if you want. There's a lot of variety. Uh, scavenger is a one-cost talent. It allows you to go ahead and um, once you get an exile, you gain, a, you gain a little bit of health and armor. And, of course, the more points you have, the more health and armor you get. And then recovery is just a good skill all around. Despite the nerves, it's still maybe one of the best if not the best uh two talent in the entire game it basically if you play it right and you get into, into an extended fight you basically just survive like 33 to 50 percent uh damage reduction just off your health it's absolutely insane the big thing i want to call out right here is scavenger uh so you'll realize that you have six talent points and this right here is five talent points so you're missing out on one Typically what I do is the 222 build. I will go for fervor because that cast speed at full charge, 25%, is actually huge. Allows you to get so much more DPS out. It's a great thing. And it's my preferred build, of course. You can run Scavenger, just in most situations. Uh Fervor is also another great two-cost talent. Easily better than Scavenger, so. It's all up to your play style, but in my opinion, Fervor is going to win out on there nine times out of ten. He's choosing to drop Fort Halcyon, looking to get a little bit of action uh, started off very quickly. 
You always want to keep your head on a swivel while you're dropping. Look up, look left, right, figure out who's dropping with you. That way you can choose where to land. Maybe not in public lobbies, but especially especially in um, com more competitive lobbies. That's something you want to keep in mind. And you can see, I want to rewind just a second. He waits until he lands. He waits until he lands before he goes ahead and spots his enemy. And while that might be a viable strat in something like Fortnite or PUBG or something like that, in a game like Spellbreak, you have the opportunity to right off the bat just delete people. Th this would have been a good opportunity to see that this man is landing kind of over here. If you look before you land, that way you don't even have to waste your time up here on the high ground. You can go ahead, you can even, while you're dropping, loop into this window. You can loop into here, although I wouldn't advise that since he's right here. You can even um, kind of curve into this one. You can curve into this one as well. There's a few different ways that you can approach this. Uh, but you definitely don't want to waste your time by landing in the high ground and being away from the immediate loot. Because that could be the difference between life and death, even this early on. Now we hear someone drop down pretty near him. And it looks like his, looks like his opponent right here might have already landed on a chest. Gets a good initial ignite. That's always very good. Playing it on the outside part of the castle, good. He did end up getting loot right there, so that part is good. Gets DF'd immediately. I want to see how he plays this out. Past the extra point that he got um, damaged right here. Right there on the firewall, that's the last source of damage. L little bit lucky. Alright, so let's break that down. So his initial engagement. Ideally, what you want to do... Is you don't want to get into this. You don't want to get into this um, sort of habit, wherever you're hammering down your W key and going forward all the time, trying to chase this guy down. It's very attractive to newer players, but it's not something that you want to do um, all the time. Especially when you analyze the situation right here. You see that he's dropping right there. You have the high ground on him. You want to keep that going. So whenever you hit him right here, he has a few options here. He could levitate up here. He can travel down this way, or he could go off the side. He could even travel backward, although most most players will hold their W key and go either this way or this way. So what he ends up doing is he actually ends up taking the high ground. He plays, the, he plays this correctly. Uh, his opponent does. He wants to levitate up here. What our friend VG Neurotic can do is he can just follow these stairs along the edge. If he goes this way, you have high ground and you're hammering him anyway. If he goes that way, same thing. You can even drop down here if you want to get a closer shot and still rain down from above. If he goes this way, you're already chasing him. But if you get sucked in, let me clear that off for you real quick. You want to be very careful about getting sucked in into this um, W key situation and following him down here, which is what you end up doing. Or even staying below here. Because what he's going to do is he's going to get high ground up here. And now he has the advantage of you. This is an easy turnaround situation. In the early game, it's a little bit diff more difficult to come from behind like this. But something to keep in mind. See, you have bad disadvantage getting to the low ground. He misses right there. And thankfully, he can't aim because you don't get hit that entire time. Now, right here, sometimes this will just um, surprise you. This player played it very well. He looped around, probably up here somewhere, threw down the DF. This is um, a little bit difficult to get out of. I'm impressed that he actually did in this fight. You play that well, kind of levitate, get some height. At this point, he's just kind of kiting. There's very little he can do other than just pray that his aim's good. But there are a few, there are a few things I want to point out. So first things first, gets hit by the DF. Right here, you don't you don't really know where your opponent is. So save save your sorcery right here with the knowledge that you're in the middle of the map and your firefly skill, this escape tool that you have, is coming up. So when you're playing Pyromancer, just keep in mind at some point, if you drop in the middle, very high chance that you will get that first skill. And you want to be listening for that ring. And also you can see the zone kind of flash in. I want to see if it um, if it actually does it in the middle of this fight. Sometimes you can see it. Maybe I'm a little early. 
me see it from the beginning, just so you can see it. Yeah, you can hear that ring right before the DF goes off. It's a little bit distracting, but you still want to hold on to your sorcery. Typically, your firewall is not going to be a main source of damage until later in the game just to close out a kill. You probably don't want to lead with it. And you can always just use it for your... Um, you can always use it for your escape tool. Now, what you do right here... You definitely don't want to be falling down right here. If you can, you want to kite a little bit backward. This is where structural uh, memory comes in. You, you know that if you play Fort Halcyon a lot, that this little ridge it actually extends back much like this does right here. So you can just uh, kite it backwards if you want to go that direction. You don't have a rune, so your options are a little bit limited. This is why it's important, especially off drop, to land on a chest and loot up as much as you can before that first fight if you can help it. But going down here isn't going to do you any favors. If this guy is good at all, he lands three easy fireballs and then you're dead. So just keep that in mind. You don't want to be on the low ground. You exhausted your escape tool, so keep that in mind for next time too. You land some good frost, some um, some good fire shots right there. One thing you do right there that you don't want to do is you want to realize what offhand you have. In this case, you have the lightning. It's not going to be good at all in close range, especially if you're not a conduit player, which you are not this time. The only thing it would be good for is landing a stun with its sorcery, um, but that costs a little bit of time, so maybe it's not your best option. So you just want to keep that on the back burner. Use your fire. It has the ignite. Other than that, just be very cognizant of where you're positioning yourself. You also had an epic fire, so you got extra lucky right there. This all goes into point number one and two, uh, movement and positioning. This game, while it might not might not seem like it at first, is all about high ground. So that's actually a good that's actually a good situation to use the firewall. That was actually pretty good. And why is it good? So your opponent, little toothpaste skin over here. He's using lightning and toxic. You see the lightning right there. The stun is a good engage. And then you see him coming out right here. Recognize his movement. He is traveling in that straight line. And you, this is actually a perfect opportunity to position that firewall. Right in, the, right in the middle of his movement. He tries to shadow step. Goes into the firewall as well. Extra ignite. And that's actually what saves you. Now, if him being a toxicologist, probably, he doesn't have Outbreak yet, but it's a good mindset to get in. So, good job there. If you're approaching this fight initially, just going back to this part right here, you see that there's a guy right there. Yeah, you see that come in? Go ahead, go ahead and put Dragonfire on this right here. It's going to eliminate his movement option if he is a toxicologist. So you DF this, possibly get some free damage, and then from there, it's again, it's all about high ground. I'm going to sound like a broken record if this is what it's going to be the entire time. But a good way to travel this up is just go up on the roof of this house. That way you have extra chance of getting that combust. Easier to land direct hits with that fireball. Just more damage in general. And also more vision, which you struggle with right here. You see him on the other side of the house right there, but you don't really know where he is. Now you're invising because you don't you don't want to be spotted first, but you're already spotted by the stun. So high ground, high ground, high ground. Alright. Ooh, the eyes. The eyes. Even if you're not looking around with that mouse, which you should be doing all the time. Your eyes. Guys right there. Keep your eyes open, buddy. Alright, so my video player has this dark theme, apparently. Let me try to get rid of the sunspots. Alright, here we go. So we got the shield going. We're looting, looting, looting. Always keep your ears open. You can hear footsteps. I don't know if you wanted to get that uh, dash. Definitely preferable to invis. I want to go over this too. The reason you pick dash over invis is because it's an immediate movement option. With invis, you're invisible, but all it does is give you extra move, extra move speed. So it's not going to save you from getting 
an extra tick out of um, Dragonfire. In fact, if you use it, you're going to burn your invis anyway. Um, there's no use. Well, there is a use in using it for travel, but dash is a lot more efficient. Uh, lower cooldown, even on the lower rarities. Really, what invis does for Pyromancer, it gives you the it gives you the uh, element of surprise, but it's nowhere near what it would be if you were a toxicologist or anything. So I would recommend Shadow Step, uh, Dash, Flight, anything like that that gives you an immediate movement option. So right here, you choose to go ahead with the high ground. The invis in that situation is a good play. Trying to use your lightning up close, you can see how difficult it can be. There's the Firefly. Good stuff. That Firefly was really good. Good deal. So in terms of what you're doing in this fight right here. All right. So keep in mind that your goal as a Pyromancer is to rain fire from above as much as possible. Proc that Combust. Get as many direct hits on that Ignite as you can. And you use your Flame Wall to either end the fight or use it for a um, for a closing option or a disengaging option. It is your lifeline, pretty much. All right, so right here, instead of going in, what you can do, you like using your lightning right here. So you can go for the stun, which I believe you do. Good stuff. But what you could do is if you back it up a little bit, instead of going directly into the pit, which is where you lose your advantage from up here, you can follow him around this way. Or if you feel like burning your mana, which I wouldn't recommend doing, you could even float that way. But you don't want to go into the pit. And there's a few reasons for that. For one thing, it gives it gives this man an easier time aiming if he has a fire. Also, I say this in my previous versions, but you want to always assume that your opponent is a stone shaper. If he is, if he is a stone shaper in this case, you going down into the pit gives him an extra option that he can use for heavy damage. He also might have a boulder, which is easier to hit when you're on level ground or even if he's on high ground. So something to keep in mind there. Not a bad idea to go for the stun. In fact, it's a good option at first. Good thing that you land it too. That stun does wonderful things for you. Now what you... I didn't realize this at first, but you put down that flame wall... This is where a dash will come in handy. You can actually use that flame wall to engage him, and then the dash just gives you more movement options. The invis, if you're going to use it in that situation, isn't a terrible thing. The lightning right there isn't terrible. Flying in to mix up your movement is good. Just got to be a little bit more aware of that high ground. I'm gonna, I told you I'm going to sound like a broken record. I'm just going to analyze this one more time, seeing what you can do to recover. Of course, you can um, go ahead and take that, take that firefly option. You're above him at that point. Easier to land your fire. You see how hard it is? You don't get any damage when you when you miss from below. Good stuff. So I'm going to keep it rolling right here. Just one thing to keep in mind is that once you're past a certain range, or once you're within a certain range, rather, you want to use that fireball as much as possible. It is your best, da it's your best damage option. One of the best uh, close range options in the entire game, so... Just want to keep that in mind. Holy OBS. Okay. <laughs> that was him, not me, I promise. <laughs> this is where point four comes in. You passed up... You passed up Toxic. You passed up Frost. Leads me to believe that you really like using this Lightning option. All right, also running the invis. So this is where I'm going to ask you to stop and think, okay? What is the purpose of your build? How are you going to how are you going to secure exiles this way? This is where the theory crafting comes in. So you passed up a dash, which leads me to assume that you have a complete affinity for the invis room. You are passing up other gauntlet options, which makes me believe that you really like lightning, and then your class, the pyromancer, everybody loves a good ignite. So you need to start thinking about what are my options and how can I best use them. The lightning, if they're really, really far, you can tag them pretty easily. At at the point where lightning becomes... It's, it's slightly shorter than when lightning becomes really good 
as an offhand that you want to start using your fire. So let's say that you're this distance away, this distance away from the enemy, okay? That, that's about right. So this is about the farthest you want to be away before you, for you to use your fire. If you're good at predicting the movement, you can be even further. But at this point, right about here, you want to start using your lightning so you can get some free damage on him. This is why I also like running the dash again or shadow step, anything that can close the distance because you want to use your fire as much as possible. It's your best damage option. Your lightning is more there just for cleanup and for engaging, but I wouldn't recommend giving away your position that way either. What your invis does is not very much. What you can do is you can go invis to start a fight and you can then get close enough to proc your fire. But if you need to escape, pretty much all you're left with effectively is your sorcery to fly away, which eliminates your option for extra ignite damage if you want to go that route or closing it out pretty easily. Um, and then you can invis afterward. That way you're separated far enough to where you can predict an enemy shot to where he's not automatically in your face and then you just wasted a rune. And as far as as far as far lightning, again, free damage if he's far enough away. And the sorcery will allow you to stun, which is a great engage tool. So how does this all work? Um, it, how does this all work together? Basically, your mid game, your mid to long range game is pretty weak. So that's something to keep in mind. If your mid to long range game is going to be weak, you want to have something to close the distance. So shadow step dash, great options. Invis, not so much. What, what your goal should be in this kind of build is to go invis if you see an enemy, get close to them, and then just rain down on the fire while keeping the high ground if you can. Or you can go invis, use your sorcery, stun them, and then rain fire. But as far as the spells go, you don't want to use lightning very often, theoretically. And you want to conserve this for your disengage if this is your route. It's by far not the best route you can run. But if that's what you're going to use, then that has to be your mindset going into this game. Sorry. I like to ramble, don't you know? Okay, good. Not a bad movement option. Just keep in mind the cooldown. If you have any suspicion that there's enemies anywhere, just keep in mind that you have 15 seconds before that sorcery comes up. And there's no talent... There's no talent besides uh, Spell Slinger that changes that, which you really don't want to use that anyway. Okay, good. I see that you're really addicted to using the, the Sorcery Hover, which is fine, actually. It's good for efficiency. The only thing you want to be careful about is make sure you're not, you're not lingering in the air for too long. I believe, if I remember my skim, yeah, right here. So what this does is it leaves you open to anybody with a frost gauntlet and anyone that's trying to hit you with this lightning sorcery. And because you don't have dash, you can't zoom out of that out of that field very quickly. So be careful not to scan this way. This is where I coined a term from another game called the PUBG Wobble or the PUBG Wiggle, whatever you want to call it, where you basically just Alternate between you do, your WASD keys, almost like a circle. That way it's harder for your enemies to hit, and then you can still rotate your mouse. That way you're not floating around in a straight line, and it makes it harder for any enemies you might not see yet to hit you. Oh, the flight would have been a good option there too. See the mana vault closing. You want to hit your invis real quick. It's always a good idea to hit your invis whenever you go in uh, for a mana vault if that's the rune you're running. Definitely don't stand still like that. You want to get that wiggle going. Not sure what the purpose of that was. Season enemy. This actually might be a good setup tool. So keep in mind your firewall there. You can use it for easy engages. This man doesn't really quite know what he's doing. Your mom smuncher? Okay. Oh god, I just... I just read that differently in my head. My, I'm, my apologies. I'm going to keep that in, though. All right, so he probably sees an enemy right there, but must hear that guy behind him. So good leading with the stone. I actually didn't see that you switched off. Good pickup on the legendary stone. Big damage. Yeah, played that pretty well. 
I'm gonna watch it one more time just to make sure I didn't miss anything. Okay, right there. What you can do is you can go ahead and just lead off. I know you have stone and it's great to use it. You want to use your your fire more because that ignite is going to give about the same amount of damage. In fact, it actually does more, if I remember correctly. I know legendary does like 38. Um, epic might do like 36 or something, but it's very similar to the stone if you land a direct hit. And ideally what you want to do is you want to be in the high ground situation. So you can use this to fly up, spacebar to cancel, and then you can just alternate between levitating and shooting your fireballs from above. You get more damage that way, and if you get a direct hit, you get that ignite going. The stone to engage is pretty good. That opponent wasn't aware. There he's just waiting for him to, to exhaust his uh, levitate, and he does. If he doesn't exhaust that levitate there, you want to kind of match him with the levitate and get a, get either even or above him. But pretty easy pickup right there. Oh, <laughs> uh, you'll you'll get used to the flight. I'm not going to I'm not really going to critique that. You'll you'll just get used to it as you go. Comes with time. It's not the end of the world if you bump into a branch. All right, good. Checking for enemies. The random boulder. Just make sure you hold on. Hold on to your sorceries. It's an audio input for your um or it's an audio output, rather, for your opponents to pick up on. And you also waste your source of damage. Okay, good. Ping. Easier to follow. Good. Pass up the shadow step. Ooh, that hurts. That hurts my soul. Yeah, he's got three points in the scavengers. Pretty good. He's traversing pretty well, too. VG Neurotic, very nice. Good. Stay off that ground as much as possible. Good stuff. Varying your movement. I like it. I like it. Making it as hard for any suspecting snipers or anybody sneaking up on you to hit you. Maybe hop around the fence a little bit more. Just a little nitpick. Staying around the trees. It's always good. Varying up the movement. Here's a frost right there. Good. Lay down the firewall. Nice job. Going right in. Awesome, moving left to left and right with the fire. Chases him right here. Stone, nice. I called that out too. Oh, barely gets clipped right there. The legendary belt, recharge your armor, good. Better rune, that, that's actually a good opportunity to go ahead and loot right there. Nice job. Got nothing to say about that. You played that pretty well. Lay down the firewall very early on to cancel out the, cancel out the frost. You follow him well, moving left and right, trying to throw off his aim. Always want to be punching him in the face with that with that fire, so that's good. And whenever he's obviously going to have to run away to heal, um, you can either pop your invis to chase and then finish him off pretty quickly, which is probably what you should do. But you also have an opportunity to go ahead and loot that legendary loot. Uh, so either way, it's pretty good. That was a good engagement. All right, good. Seize an opponent over here. 360 fire shot. Doesn't land it. That would have been so cool. All right, so here's the fight going on. Right here, you want to stay hidden. Oh. Well, if you can land the free damage, land the free damage, of course. Good pickup. Nicely done. All right, so he pops his vital stone. Chasing him. Good. Nice job. Now, if I'm going to nitpick this, and I will nitpick this, okay? That's what I do. Welcome to nitpick land. You're about to get nitpicked. All right. You have the stone, so it's good to stay on the ground right here if you see the guy coming. I don't think you do, but it's lucky that you did right there. And using your fire as much as possible when he goes invis. Very nice. Lands down the free stone. Extra ignite. Now, just keep in mind, you don't have to avoid your own firewall. So you can firefly through here. Get the high ground, look for him wherever he is, land your fireball. 
or you can just hang out up here on the higher ground, which is what I would do. Or you can even, if you're going to go around, stay up here. Just see where he goes. You can even rotate along this ground as well. And either way, it's an easier exile. That way you're not so close to him. You're not getting uh, hit by your own fireballs if you're too close. Unless you use your stone option, which it's still better to have the high ground. So just keep in mind. Either way works out for him. Oh, sorry for this choppiness. It only happens whenever I unpause. Okay, good. A little bit of a swivel, making sure that no one's coming. Good stuff. Keeping the invis. Keeping the invis on deck. I haven't seen him. Okay, there we go. And he finally uses it. This man doesn't really know what's happening. Good. Stays off the ground. Good stuff. I think this man's a tempest, and he doesn't quite know what he's doing. Aw, oh, unfortunate. All right. Again, dash can help you get over there a little bit faster. Good try on the boulder, though. Thinks he's healing right there. Might as well check. Now keep looking right here. Yeah, check everywhere before you go ahead and start to loot. Because he could be just around one more corner. And you know how low he is. I mean, you just killed him with six damage. Keep chasing him. Good initial engagement. Did pretty well with that one. So far, so far the gripes are just figuring out how to gain high ground in the middle of a fight, which you'll get with um, more awareness for more experience. And just always be mindful of it. You're doing a good job of minimizing your mana usage whenever you're levitating, which is good. Good engage. This is what you want to do. Good stuff. You have your fly-in option. The stone coming down. Unfortunately, a little bit of a glitchy cancel right there. Oh, but you see the third party. Good. Good. Let me explain why that's so good. So, he sees that there's a frost sniper over here. He knows that his opponent just used flight, so he probably can't chase him very well with the build he has. So... He goes invis and says, hey, I'm a little bit low on my shields. Let's rotate towards this guy, but also get my shields going. That is a very good, that's very good decision making. Of course, you probably don't want to do it on the ground like you are. You can even lurk inside this house or even around it just to cut off a little bit of vision because some people can see through the invis, myself included. So there's something to keep in mind there, but the decision making is pretty on par. Okay, you just heard the frost one more time. There he is right there. Good in his face. Fireball, you see where he's going. Good cancel. Invis, while he doesn't have line of sight, that's very good. That's exactly when you want to use it. Yeah, this is what I like. Goes for the miracle shot. Not going to get it, though. Good. So I want to point out, he does a very good job of um, of using his invis whenever line of sight is cut off. That's exactly what you want to do. If your opponent sees you go invis, then there's a better chance of him tracking it where you're going, especially with the momentum you already have. By doing it out of line of sight, he has no idea, unless he somehow sees a shimmy in the ground. Good. Lay down that back cage. Good deal. Lay it down that back wall. It's very hard to detect. You can hit, you can have an audio cue that you can somewhat hear um, if you're going up against a pyromancer, but it's still very hard to detect in a loud game like this one is. So good job. Put put that back wall up. Nowhere for him to go, and you're closing the distance. Very nicely done. I'm only gripe. Just don't spam your uh, boulders like that. Keep them conserved. They have a kind of a long cooldown, so want to keep that in mind. Good engage, but don't go all the way in. Unless you're planning on using that stone, which you're primarily a pyromancer, you should have the mindset of getting high ground first. You see how hard it is to hit from below? By the way, it's a 1v1 situation by this point. Get the high ground like this guy is. He's playing this perfectly. He just doesn't quite have the mechanical skill. TTV, you're bad, YT. Uh, go subscribe, I guess. <laughs> 
subscribe to the to the dead to the dead uh, breaker, I guess. Okay, so let's uh, let's review this real quick. The final one v one. All right, so at this point, you can probably hear him just a little bit. You're on the higher part. Good. Get on top of that house all the way on the roof. Even if you already know he's going to be over here, go ahead and get on top of the roof. Higher ground. He has to work harder to get to your same level. Good cover on your end. And it's just easier to hit your fire shots. Because now you have sight on all the other houses. Kind of checking around, get a little bit of last minute loot. That's that's another thing I want to call out. I called this out on my last one too. You're in a final 1v1 unless you're running past some some potions or some last minute shields. You want to keep moving and pick them up, but never do your talents. And always stay moving your character. The reason you don't do talents is because it freezes you in, in movement. And also the sound of it currently as it is just blocks any sort of other... Uh, audio cue that you're getting, so keep that in mind. Also, while we're at it with the shields, as far as your inventory, um, I should have mentioned this a whole lot earlier, but have as many shields in your inventory as possible. It's the first resource that goes, and once you're down to your health, you're already very close to death, so it's always good to have that, um, that extra little bit of protection. Good, you're on the roof right here. Great place to start. Stay up here. Just go ahead. Stay up here. You can get on the edge right here and just rain down the fireballs and use your boulder when it comes up too. You can get them probably to half health that way if you're good at aiming. And it's just a great thing to do because then what you can do is you can see where this guy reacts. You can go up here, 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 here. You have full vision of everything. There's nothing that he can do to get around you, especially at that distance. So just keep that in mind. See, now he has high ground, harder to land your fireballs. Don't be afraid to use that flight. You want to you want to use that firefly to get up to the high ground. See, because perfect example, it's so hard to hit him when he's in the air like that. So you want to be above him, and even if you can, even if you barely miss him, you have the ground to back you up, just like that one right there. Then that was a good boulder. All right, so that's pretty much it. So in terms of the four fundamentals, um. Let's go over let's go over them in order. All right. Ooh, text. Yes. Oh wait. That's a pro option. No, get out. Okay. All right, so let's let's talk about number 1. I'm going to call movement, positioning, C and T for class and talents. And then we're going to call for build synergy. So what can you do better? Early game, build and synergy. Have that in mind, what you want to do. Uh, lightning and fire is good if you're a conduit, but not as good if you're a pyromancer. So be looking for a toxic. You can, or you can look for a stone. If you're good at sniping, you can hit frost. All of these options are going to be better than the lightning that you picked up at the very beginning. You end up with stone, which is good. Uh, but just keep in mind for the um, for the early game. Also, the rune choice. Look out for these three. You want dash, shadow step, or flight. The reason being is because it can get you out of a fight and it can get you into a fight. Invis is kind of limited. Because you can only really sneak up on people getting into a fight. If you somehow create distance, you can then um, kind of get away from a fight, but it's a lot harder. So just keep that in mind for fundamental number four. Class and talents, um, really great class. If you can, choose fervor. It's a lot better than scavenger in most scenarios. Especially if you play duos too. It's the solos, so it's fine if you want scavenger, but fervor, fervor is a little bit better. Uh, positioning. Your biggest thing. Just look for high ground and stay there in all scenarios if you can. Unless the guy's low and you want to chase him for that exile, that's fine. You can leave the high ground. Um, but you need to prioritize this just a little bit more. Um, let's see. 
I'm going to call this optimal distance. So Pyromancer is going to teach you this just by virtue of you damaging yourself. But just make sure you keep an optimal distance between you and your opponent. If you're too close, you're going to get hurt by your own fireball. And that also teaches you, especially against uh, Toxicologists, they have that outbreak. The closer they are, the more dangerous they are. So keep in mind your optimal distance. It's what I showed you earlier in the video. So if you uh, don't know what I'm talking about right now, just rewind going back to that point about lightning and fire in the, in the early game. Um, if you're running lightning, uh, you can go ahead and um, get that long range that long range damage going. But once it starts becoming a little bit more consistent, go ahead and try out the fireball. Get used to predicting your shots. It's the main thing about that one. And then your movement is fine. It, I wish I could have seen you in a game with um, with dash and shadow step because that's what really makes a good pyromancer is knowing when to incorporate those into your um, into your firefly. Well, I can I can go ahead and um, talk about your firefly usage. Uh, use it more, basically. Use your firefly more. If you're going to run invis, um, you did a pretty good job of using it after you did the firefly the few times that you did it. Um, really, just use your Firefly more. Close the distance. Escape if you need to. Um, you can even just lay lay down your Firewall to get a quick bit of damage off. And then don't forget that your Firewall is there. Because you can use it to um, mix up your movement if you fall behind. You can even use it if the fight goes a certain way. Um, if you don't completely forget about your Firewall, you can go ahead and get a quick flight and finish it out by closing the distance. Overall, it's a good game. You got very lucky in the early game. But you played decently uh, throughout the mid to late game. So good job. And that's all I got. If there's anybody in the chat that would like to ask a question, ask away. Early in the game, from what he saw, he didn't use pots efficiently. And pots means potions. Um, he used too many potions or too little after fights. So it's a good point. I'm going to get to a portion of the video where we're talking about. Priorities after your fight. Number one is your health and shield. Uh, prioritize that over everything. Even if there's a talent in front of you, it's not going anywhere. If you get into the middle of a fight, um, you're going to cancel your, the reading of your talent anyway. And now you're going to be down health and shield. So that's a, that's a good point. Thanks for bringing that up, Novin. Um, there's not a 40 HP shield, uh, HP, sorry, 40 HP potion, like you said, but he does have a shield right there the big pot of the shield, go ahead and drink up that shield. It's a little thing that'll go a long way. Holy moly, my video. There we go. Like you, you sit on this a while. Yeah, there you go. And use the small one. I understand you want to go ahead and um, save the big shield. But at this point in the early game, there still might be people around. Go ahead and pop the big one. Even if you overheal by a little bit, you're still in the early game, so there's a lot more to go around. And if you get into the middle of a fight, you have that extra 20 shield recharging over time, and it's going to give you a little bit of cushion shield that you're not going to see until you actually get into the fight. So priorities, uh, health and shield, loot, talents, in that order. Yeah, exactly. So what he's saying right here is saving the big the big potion won't help as much as a small, especially without thirsty during later fights, because there's more action. So yeah. You do have that option. 